Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today, I'm going to do a manga review for Kobato Volumes 1 and 2. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Kobato Volumes 3 and 4, a list of top villain pairs in the Batman universe, and in a few weeks, a movie review of Batman and Harley Quinn. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismodon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Monster Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all of these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So the way that this works is that I'm going to do a pretty detailed recap of Volume 1 of Kobato and then give my thoughts on the volume and do the same for Volume 2. So let's get uh, started uh, with Volume 1 of Kobato. So the volume begins with this stuffed animal dog, Io Ryogi telling Kobato Hanato that her trial begins, and it determines whether or not she's rather worthy to have her wish granted. Io Ryogi asks what uh, her wish is, and she says that there's a place that she wants to go. To do, that, to do that, she needs to fill up a bottle to the brim with wounded hearts. She must do her best to earn that bottle. And in order to earn that bottle, Kobato must take an aptitude test to see if she's capable of living there. She must be able to act according to the common sense rules of this place. Kobato is asked to take out the trash, but fails, so she gets zero points from Io Ryogi. We are then introduced to someone named Fujimoto, working at a food stand who receives a phone call from Yomogi Kindergarten. He talks to someone named Sayaka-sensei, and apparently some creeps showed up at the uh, kindergarten again. The boss lets him go of the food stand, and he goes running to her. Kobato goes to that very food stand, and the boss says that he's short-handed, and Kobato decides to help. She messes up and makes a nabe, uh, nabe concoction that the customers actually like. And for that, she gets 40 point, uh, points from Io Ryogi. Um, we then go to Christmas time. Kobato decides to get a Christmas cake. Kobato gets a part time gig selling Christmas cakes for the bakery Tyrol, which, if you're a. Uh, if you know the Clamp Universe, Tyrol is, is a bakery that was that appeared in uh, Chowitz, right? Chowitz? Yeah, I, I have Chowitz. Um, and then it, it, I believe it makes appearances in other um, Clamp Universe titles as well. Uh, the boss, who is a familiar character, who is a pretty familiar character in the Clamp universe. Uh, somewhat familiar, I guess. Uh, the boss gives her a cake before the store closes. So a woman goes to Tyrol for a cake, but it's closed. Kobato gives her that uh, the cake that she was given um, from the boss. And for that, she gets 90 points. So we then skip to New Year's Day. Uh, they see an old woman. It is actually... Um, if you read XXXaholic, I've read these actually, so, um, I'm familiar with these characters myself. Uh, it's an old woman that you will see in XXXaholic. And Kobato helps her. Pretty much they just play around all day. 
the old woman reveals that she's a fortune teller and and a legit one too in the xxxaholic uh universe um they actually go to her and she legitimately tells fortunes not like some fake fortune teller Fred xxxaholic um or two more, uh you you'd know the chapter i'm talking about but anyways, um, the old woman gives Kobato balls of mochi and sake for Iyo Ryogi. Uh, she apparently knows that Iyo Ryogi is alive and tells Kobato that she hopes her wish comes true. She then tells Kobato that as she comes across more people from now on, she may find her wish changing a bit. We go to Valentine's Day. We're introduced to Sayaka-sensei. Who is uh, buying something in Tyrol? She's told that Fujimoto has helped them out in Tyrol, and uh, the people there give Sayaka a small box of chocolates that she was looking at, um, as well as the stuff she bought, of course. Um, Sayaka sits on a bench and drops the chocolates, um, the gift that was given to her, uh, and Kobato finds it. Kobato then looks for the owner. Sayaka then goes to Yomogi Kindergarten and sees Fujimoto. She realizes that she dropped the small box of chocolates. Uh, it's nighttime and Kobato apparently couldn't find the owner of the chocolates. And Iryogi I tells her that she should have turned in the box of chocolates to the police instead of running around town. So she only gets 35 points. Uh, we then skip to go to um, Hanami. The sakura trees are in full bloom. Kobato saves a, a spot underneath the uh, sakura trees. And then people then start asking her to join them in their like celebrations or, or whatever. Fujimoto and Sayakis are at that same viewing area. Uh, the people ask uh, Kobato to sing for them and she does. She apparently has a wonderful voice, and for that, she gets 95 points. We then go to a rainy day. Kobato almost loses the hat on her head. Uh, Iyo Ryogi tells her not to ever take off her hat. So, uh, Kobato then goes to Tyrol, and the owner gives her an umbrella. She then goes to the store, and her umbrella gets stolen. Uh, Kid gives her a new umbrella. And then she trips on the street, and Iyo Ryogi falls with her. And because of that, Kobato gets zero points. We go to a hot day. Iyo Ryogi wants a beer. So, Kobato tries to get one. She runs off, and a creature that looks like a cross between a rabbit and a wolf named Ginsei appears before Iyo Ryogi seems to know him. Ginsei reveals that Iyo Ryogi is not his real name. And Iyo Ryogi... Iyo Ryogi uh, tells Gensei that if he lays a finger on Kobato, he's going to wring his neck. They fight, and Iyo Ryogi gets the upper hand. Gensei uh, tells him that he's going to finish his business with him someday. Kobato finds beer for Iyo Ryogi and gives it to him, but spills it on him. And then Iyo Ryogi asks her what her wish is and how to get it, and he he then gives her the bottle. Okay, so we see Kobato introducing herself to Chitose Mihara from Chobits. Um, she is the manager, and actually, not just Chobits, um, and Jack Lair as well, actually. I don't know if she actually makes an appearance there, but she is very much tied into Angelic Lair. Um, it's besides the point though. Uh, Chitose is the manager of the apartment building and Kobato will be living there. The next day, Kobato tries to heal hearts, uh, but fails. An old man says that he wants to be healed and tries to take her away. Fujimoto appears and punches the old man, then gets mad at Kobato. The next day, Kobato runs into Sayaka, who is, uh, with some kids. Sayaka tells her that she doesn't have enough help at the kindergarten. Kabato says that she'll help, and Sayaka formally introduces herself as Sayaka Okiura and asks Kabato to be her new assistant. 
Fujimoto appears and says not to hire some weirdo off the street so carelessly. Sayaka says that they'll be working together. Fujimoto and Kabato. Fujimoto tells Kabato that he doesn't approve of her. And at the end of the volume, Kabato sleeps with Ryogi as she holds the bottle. So some thoughts on volume one. This, I mean, this volume overall is very much an introductory volume. It's, this is a short series, too. It's only six volumes. They do have an anime series for it. Um, we kind of just got to know a little bit about the backstory, the motivation, who the characters are, and whatnot. Um, as far as the art goes, it's your typical clamp art. Very cute. Kabato is super cute, frilly clothing, um, you got a lot of the male characters who are just super tall, <laughs> they just, have, they have this like tallness about them, and they, they have really long limbs, <laughs> like a lot of them have really long legs, uh, it's just something about like the way Clamp designs their characters uh which is fine it's it's their style i actually like their style i've, I've read a bunch of clamp stuff xxxaholic and jack layer chobits magic knight ray earth um Subasa reservoir Chron chronicles uh there's some lesser known ones too there, there's that one with the uh who dis who disguises him guy who disguises himself um, his name I forgot, so, I, I read some of them, um, there's a really obscure one that I, I read too, and I forgot its name, I've seen a good amount of X, but I haven't, I haven't read X, but what's cool is like, there's a clamp universe, right, and you get to see a lot of characters from the clamp universe, oh, Wish, Wish is really big, uh, on this, um, I don't think you saw any characters from Wish quite, uh, quite yet, but, um, I know in later volumes that some characters from Wish will appear, uh, and they go by the Clamp Universe rules and world, so characters that you see from other Clamp titles, you'll see here, they all live in the same world, um, and some of the story mechanics and some of the tools that they use and whatnot some of the ideas are exclusive to the clamp universe as well so that's something you get out of kobato um it's cool seeing the characters from the clamp universe uh you know some of them are, are a bit more obscure some of them are um you'd recognize right away i mean you don't see sakura oh yeah obviously card captor sakura um, or like Shell Rod or anything like that. Um, but you already got to see a, a good amount of characters. And actually they play, some of them are going to play uh, relatively important roles in Kobato. So there, there's a lot. Like, you don't necessarily have to know the Clamp universe in order to enjoy Kobato. But it does help uh, i would actually recommend more so than anything else though for kobato uh if you read wish because wish really ties into kobato quite a bit uh more so than any of the other uh clamp universe titles um the tie-in is actually it, it's this would actually be something of a sequel to Wish, if you actually think about it. Um, well, let's get to the characters. We got Kobato, super cute, airheaded. <laughs> I mean, she has just no common sense, kind hearted, um, energetic, and, you know, she is very much a clamp main hero if you think about it you know i mean there's a little bit of 
you know, you can kind of get, like, a little bit of every main character, uh, main female character from, like, from the clan universe. I can see a little bit of Chi in her. I can see a little bit of Card Catra Sakura in her. I can see a little bit of, um, oh, man, I, I totally forgot the names of, like, the characters in Magic Knight Ray Earth, the red-headed one. Um, unfortunately, I just like the energy. Um, you can see a lot of different aspects, but you know, she's uniquely her too. Um, but yeah, she's, I, I guess you'd say pretty typical of your characters from like the clamp universe. Um, you know, her mission is to fill this bottle with wounded hearts. I don't know where she wants to go, how she's going to go about exactly getting all the wounded hearts. Um, there's also something going on with her hat. You know, she can't take it off. So, like, already, and, and when you get it with, like, Sayaka and whatnot, um, and Ginse, you, already there is something of a sense of a bigger and possibly darker thing going on. I don't know, not necessarily with Kobato, but you can definitely see that there's some sort of conflict um, going on, like with Gensei, for example. He's got some conflict with Iorogi. Um Obviously, something happened with Yomogi Kindergarten. You don't really know what it is yet, but there is just this looming sense of danger and mystery. Uh, a lot more mystery with Kobato more so than anything else. I mean, let's face facts. Like, she's she's talking to a stuffed animal, a talking stuffed animal. I mean, she can't just be a normal girl. You know what I mean? It, it just... It doesn't make sense. You know? I mean, maybe she is. I, and she just... Just so happened to run into Io Ryogi. We don't really know their backstory of how they met. Or anything like that. But I think... And the fact that she can get a bottle with these hearts. I mean, she's... It, it's hard to believe that she's just a human, per se. Um, Io Ryogi... Very interesting, you know, uh, you always have to have the mascot, and once again, if you've seen something like, um, Cardcaptor Sakura, you know, you have this, like, kind of, like, he's the straight man, um, uh, mascot, you know, like, Kiro Barros was in, uh, Cardcaptor Sakura, you know. Uh, he just kind of points out the dumb things that Kobato does. And in this case, it's very apparent. They're almost like, in a sense, they're almost kind of self-aware. Yeah, in a sense, he's kind of self-aware of what's going on. And just almost of how ridiculous this whole thing, um, Kobato, or how ridiculous Kobato can be. So he's very much a straight man. But obviously, he has a big backstory. I mean, he has something going on with Ginse. Um... I mean, heck, he's a talking stuff animal. You know what I mean? Uh, he seems to have powers. And we don't know the extent of those powers. We don't really know how he met Kobato at this time. Introduced to Fujimoto. Uh, he seems like a jerk. Once again, kind of typical of their <laughs> clamp. Um, I guess there's like a clamp archetype. And yeah, a lot of these characters kind of fit into that clamp archetype. If you see, I mean, there's so much clamp material out there. Um, but he's kind of like this mean, aloof, you know, guy. That The fact that he's helping out in the kindergarten kind of shows he's this mean, aloof guy with the heart of gold. I mean... He's helping out at, the, at this kindergarten for a reason. He can't be all bad. Um, he uh, already clashes with the main protagonist, Kobato. 
And then we also saw Sayaka Sensei. Um, she seems nice. It's very much like Ch Chitose, actually. Um, once again, going back to the clamp archetype, you know. Uh, seems nice, but uh, I can imagine she's very distressed. Obviously, something happened in the kindergarten. And um, she's got to be a part of it. We don't really know much about her, but except for right now, she seems nice. She's already taken Kobato in, even though she just met her. So, um, could that be naivety? Yes. Could it be uh, something else? Sure, you know. Um, but for right now, we don't know too much about her. I also don't know much about Ginsei, except that, like, he knows Iaryogi, he can fight, and they have a pass together. I don't know if he's going to interfere with Kobato, um, but we shall see. Okay, on to volume two. The volume begins with Kobato speaking with Chitose before she has to go to work. Uh, Kobato has a mark on her cheek and reveals that she doesn't have a futon. Kobato then goes to work and Fujimoto gets mad at her for being 1 minute and 23 seconds late. Sayaka shows up and tells her that if he picks on her, she'll straighten him out with her fist. Um, Sayaka mentions to Fujimoto that was just like uh, back in the day. Uh, she then asks Fujimoto if Kobato seems like a nice girl. Fujimoto comments that how many times has she said that only to be hurt later. He tells her to be on guard. The next day at the kindergarten, Sayaka gets a phone call and answers the phone. Once she hangs up, she looks distressed as Iyo Ryogi watches. Back at the apartment, Chitose's daughters, Chise and Chiho, give Kobato a futon. The next day, Kobato goes to the kindergarten and sees some debt collectors that look like Yakuza. One of them grabs Kobato by the hair, but Fujimoto comes and rescues her. Sayaka appears. Uh, one of the debt collectors tells her not to be so uppity just because their boss is a nice guy. One of the children, Toshihiko, yells for the police, and the debt collectors run off. Walking home, Kobato sees Toshihiko alone on the swings. He tells her that he's waiting for his mom to come back from work. He tells Kobato that people call his mother bad for leaving him alone while she works. Kobato says that he has a great mother. Toshihiko then hugs Kobato. At home, Kobato sees that she has gotten a wounded heart in the bottle. Iorioyi says it's probably from Toshihiko. They hear their neighbor. Kobato goes out to introduce herself, but she finds out that her neighbor is Fujimoto. He tells her not to cause him any trouble, and she gets mad. The next day, Kobato is in a box with Iorioyi and a baby kitten. Kabato runs into Fujimoto, and he suggests to keep away from the kitten. He says that people who give attention to a stray and leave are just as bad as those that left it. At the kindergarten, Kabato shows everyone the kitten and hopes someone will adopt it. Kabato gets a um, towel. Uh, to She was in the rain when she was in the box. And the phone rings. She picks up and it's the loan shark. He leaves a message for Sayaka saying that he's not going to extend her repayment deadline and that she'd better be prepared to vacate. Iyo Ryogi observes that the loan shark referred to Sayaka without the honorific. You know what that means? That, that means like some very strong familiarity. Um, if you leave out the honorific. Um, I hope I got that right. At Chitose's place, Chitose, Chitose says she knows Sayaka and tells Kobato that they were in the same class. Kobato tells Chitose about the debt collectors and Chitose's face gets sad. Her daughters come home and they talk about a bazaar. Kobato decides to have one for Yomogi Kindergarten. 
uh, back at the kindergarten. Kabato excitedly tells Sayaka about having a bazaar. Fujimoto appears and tells them that it's a waste of time. Kabato then runs off to do some sweeping. While sweeping, Kabato is clearly sad. Sayaka approaches her and agrees to have the bazaar. They tell the kids about it, and Kabato draws animals very badly. And Fu Fujimoto makes fun of her for it. Sayaka mentions to Kabato that she thinks that uh, Fujimoto likes Kabato, assuming uh, that it's it's platonic. Uh, she says that ever since she was little, he ignored people that he truly didn't like. Sayaka then says neither of them, neither he nor Fujimoto kun, could ever just accept things as they were. Kabato asks who he is, and Sayaka dodges the question. Outside of the kindergarten at night, the lone shark appears or appears and approaches Kobato. He asks Kobato if he gave Sayaka the message. He then tells her that when the deadline passes, he will crush the kindergarten even if the kids are still inside. At the apartment, Kobato contemplates when the uh, what the lone what the loan shark said out loud. I think she's outside. She's not in her room. And Fujimoto hears her. He inquires who this man that he she's talking about. And when she describes him, he tells her to keep her mouth shut to Sayaka. At the kindergarten, Fujimoto is on the phone telling the person on the phone that if he makes Sayaka cry one more time, Fujimoto will make it so that he can never show up in front of Sayaka again. Assuming, it's, I think it's easy it's to assume that's, that's the lone shark. Fujimoto then says not to pop up in front of Sayaka anymore and calls the person Okiura. It's revealed that Sayaka and the debt collector, or the lone shark, had the same last name, Okiura, if you remember that from the first volume. They then have the bazaar the next day, but no one shows up. Chitose and her daughters, though, show up, eventually show up, and they tell, or Chitose tells them that she saw some posters that said the date was next week. Kobato runs off to tell everyone uh, that she can about the bazaar. The old woman shows up. She is apparently taking care of the kitten that Kobato found. People from the town end up showing um uh, end up showing up. They tell them that Kabato was walking around yelling about the bazaar. The next day, the bottle, uh, the bottle has a few more wounded hearts. Kabato wonders if Fujimoto manages to have any days off when she sees him because he's going off. To, I believe he's just going off to work again. At the kindergarten, Kabato is two minutes late and Fujimoto apparently was one minute late. At the end of the volume, Kabato, the phone rings, Kabato picks up the phone, and it's the Lone Shark. So, some thoughts on volume 2, we got to we got introduced to the Lone Shark. Um, Okiura, who has the same last name as Sayaka. Um, very interesting, he's, I mean, positioned as the main villain of the series, but he doesn't act like a villain. I mean, the only thing that's villainous about him is he smokes a cigarette, really. And if you can even call that villainous. Otherwise, he seems very nice, <laughs> honestly. And, um, the, uh, the goons pretty much even said that the boss is a nice guy. Uh, so, it's, you go with, like, this, you know, um, clamp has this way of making characters having a sense of duality, you know. We already kind of see it here, you know, he's not your typical villain. Um, I'm trying to think if any villains from Clamp are like him. And I want to say that there probably are some that I just don't remember. Um... can't think of any at the moment, but um, one thing about the Clamp Universe too is that 
villains a lot of times are never what they appear to be. Um, so we'll kind of see moving forward what the Lone Shark Okira's angle is, um, what his connection is to Fujimoto, what his fu connection is to Sayaka. Obviously, has the same last name as Sayaka, so there's probably some deeper connection there. Um, what that is at this moment, we don't really know. We're seeing a lot more Fujimoto and Kobato pairings here. Um, she obviously gets frustrated with him. He doesn't exactly make it easy to like him, but there's something there going on. I mean... It's a clamp title. We've seen this before. Shawron and Sakura, among others, in, in a um, this could turn out to be romantic. Just pointing that out right now. Um, it very well could just be platonic, but something is growing. Obviously, he seems to at least have some level of interest in her, um, at least platonically. Uh, seems to at least like her, and, you know, even though he doesn't show it. He is, quote unquote, like the badass with the heart of gold, in a sense. Um, we'll kind of see how this relationship moves further along. Um, we didn't get, we got to know a little more about Kabato, and in a sense we didn't. We knew she was energetic, we knew that she was high-spirited, um, more of a positive thinker and whatnot, very enthusiastic. Kind of knew that early on, but it, it was, I guess, greater exemplified in this volume. Uh... She did get some wounded hearts in her bottle, so, you know, we'll see moving forward how many more she can get and how she goes about it, but, um, just progress, at the very least. So, uh, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to this manga review. Next time, I will have a manga review for Kobato Volumes 3 and 4, a list of the top villain pairs in the Batman universe, and in a few weeks, a movie review for Batman and Harley Quinn. Thank you, and until next time.